Hello, today we're going to talk about personality disorders. If you've had a chance to do some reading on the personality disorders already, you will appreciate that of all the disorders we'll be talking about during our time together, probably the least is known about these disorders as a broad category, about the causes of these disorders or how to treat them. There are a couple of exceptions, especially antisocial personality disorder and borderline personality disorder. A fair amount more seems to be known about those two disorders and we will be exploring them in a little more depth. Let's begin by talking about, well, what is personality? Personality refers to each person's characteristic pattern of thoughts, feelings, and behavior across situations and over time. A normal personality tends to be flexible and adaptive. We are able to respond to the changing needs and requirements of situations in which we find ourselves. In the case of personality disorders, individuals with a personality disorder tend to show deeply ingrained maladaptive patterns of thought, feelings, and behavior across situations and over time. They tend to be rigid. They're not able to adapt effectively to the changing requirements of situations. And people with personality disorders tend to engage in the same self-defeating patterns of behavior over and over and over again. These self-defeating patterns of behavior cause problems in the person's life and relationships, causing distress and or dysfunction for the individual, and also oftentimes just distress for the people around them. As you may know already, there are three categories of personality disorders, sometimes referred to as clusters. Odd, dramatic, and anxious. There are a total of 10 personality disorders altogether we will be talking about, and they are organized in these three different categories or clusters. The odd personality disorders include paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal. And you'll sometimes hear people refer to it as schizotypal. An individual with a paranoid personality disorder is very suspicious of the motives of others. They're not delusional in the way somebody who is schizophrenic could very well be, but they do have a tendency to misinterpret and distort things other people say or do and make assumptions that are not accurate. And the assumptions tend to usually go along the lines of being convinced that other people are trying to do them in in some way, take advantage of them, uh, treat them badly, spread rumors about them or something of that nature. The paranoid individual usually has no real uh, proof for their, um, what may be accusations, but they still are convinced. <clears throat> that they are true. 
individuals with the paranoid personality disorder oftentimes come across as being angry and hostile in their manner of relating to others as well. As you might imagine, people with this disorder have great difficulty in their relationships. If they happen to be married, it's probably problematic. In work uh, situations also, they have a great difficulty dealing with other people and oftentimes can stir up a fair amount of conflict. Someone with paranoid personality disorder would not be very likely to seek help for themselves, nor would they be very likely to benefit from it because they have such difficulty trusting other people. And how can you really benefit much from therapy unless you and your therapist can develop a trusting relationship with one another? Individuals with schizoid personality disorder Basically, they just want to be left alone. They are loners, and they prefer it that way. When you read the case study in our book of an individual with schizoid personality disorder, you'll appreciate exactly what I'm talking about. Now, later on, we will be talking about a different personality disorder in the anxious cluster called avoidant and a way in which people with avoidant personality disorder are different from those with schizoid personality disorder is that they would like to have relationships. They just don't know how to go about it and they're afraid to try. But people with schizoid personality disorder, they really seem to be much more content when they are able to just keep to themselves similar to the paranoid personality disorder individuals with schizoid personality disorder are not very likely to seek therapy nor benefit a whole lot from it because they are so disconnected you know, from other people and again how can you really profit from a therapy relationship unless you are able to form a productive connection in between yourself and your counselor or therapist. Individuals with schizotypal personality disorder are in some ways similar to those with schizoid disorder, personality disorder, because they also tend to be more loner type people. But they're different in that they tend to be more eccentric in their ways of thinking and behaving. So there's this odd quality to them not to the extent that we would probably say they're psychotic but just odd now just because somebody is a little bit on the odd or eccentric side does not necessarily mean they have a personality disorder in fact what a boring place the world would be if we didn't have unique personalities in it in the way that some people are what we might call uh, or eccentric or out, you know, out of the norm. But individuals with schizotypal personality disorder, it tends to be more pronounced to the extent that it can really interfere with their ability to function in life. Similar to the paranoid and schizoid personality disorders, individuals with schizotypal personality disorder also do not tend to benefit all that much from psychotherapy. So we can see a theme here that people with personality disorders generally don't gain a lot from therapy uh, with a couple of exceptions that we'll be getting into. The second cluster of personality disorders is the cluster of dramatic personality disorders. And there are four disorders that uh, are included in this category. Antisocial, borderline, histrionic, and narcissistic. These are all fascinating personality disorders. So let's explore them a little bit. First of all, 
antisocial personality disorder is one of the disorders that has received a fair amount of attention. Probably one reason for this is because people with antisocial personality disorders can cause some major problems in the lives of other people and in society at large. When we hear the term antisocial, it makes us think, well, anti meaning against social, they don't want to be around people. But it has a different meaning than that. Do you know that meaning? Antisocial here means the person is against the social order, would be a way of putting it, against society. So people with antisocial personality disorder, they have a disregard for rules. They tend to take advantage of other people in order to meet their own needs. Uh, they tend to be manipulative and dishonest. Some of them engage in criminal activity. They seem to lack guilt or remorse for their actions. And they don't seem to experience anxiety in the normal way that the rest of us do. People with antisocial personality disorder oftentimes have a history of exploitation of other people. They use people for whatever they need to get out of them. It might be money, it might be position, it might be sex, who knows, but they are very effective at uh, exploring and exploiting the vulnerabilities of other people and taking advantage of them. Interestingly, people with antisocial personality disorder don't seem to experience anxiety, guilt, or remorse in the way that, that most of the rest of us would. If you or I were to do something wrong, probably we would feel badly about it. And we would want to try to make it right in some way if we could. Also, if we find ourselves um, in trouble, we're probably going to experience anxiety over that and to be motivated to learn from our experience so that we would hopefully not repeat the same patterns of behavior over and over again. But individuals with antisocial personality disorder generally seem to lack this ability. They don't seem to feel the same feelings that normal people do after they do something wrong. And they don't seem to learn from their experience. Perhaps because of that. Also, it's been found that people with antisocial personality disorder seem to have a lower level of arousal in their nervous system when they're just in a resting state. And sometimes they engage in uh, reckless, impulsive behavior, perhaps to increase the level of excitement in their life in order to increase their level of arousal. So as you can see, people with antisocial personality disorders have a whole host of problems, oftentimes inflicted upon other people in ways that can cause real distress and heartbreak uh, and worse in the lives of the people that the individual of antisocial personality disorder may victimize or take advantage of. Not surprisingly, people with antisocial personality disorder do not tend to respond very well to psychotherapy. Read the fascinating case in your textbook of the individual with antisocial personality disorder, and you'll get an appreciation for uh, the kind of things that we're talking about. If as someone with this disorder were in therapy, they would probably try to put on a good front and manipulate their therapist. And they're really good at it, by the way. And none of that would bode well for effective therapy. 
when we get into the chapter on uh, childhood disorders, uh, next chapter we'll be exploring, there's a disorder in there called conduct disorder of childhood. And one of the things you'll notice is that uh, people with antisocial personality disorder usually start having problems at a much younger age than adulthood. And you can see these patterns emerging in childhood and adolescence in a diagnosis called conduct disorder. Many of those individuals with conduct disorder will develop into people with antisocial personality disorder in, in adulthood. Another of the dramatic personality disorders is borderline personality disorder and a fair amount is also known about this disorder. If you uh, become a clinician working in a mental health setting, chances are you will work with individuals with borderline personality disorder from time to time. Uh, they can be very challenging clients, yet the re they also can also be rewarding to work with. Individuals with borderline personality disorder tend to display uh, patterns of self-defeating behavior marked by extremes. They tend to have poor emotional self-regulation and they may uh, be inclined to have uh, times when, they, when they're filled with rage and, and act out their feelings in, an, in, a, in a pretty much uncontrollable kind of way. Uh, sometimes they can become easily um, provoked into a suicidal state of mind, especially uh, if they have experienced some sort of um, a rejection in a relationship. In working with people with borderline personality disorder, the concerns about suicidality need to be first and foremost because they need to stay safe in order to be able to work on the other important issues in their life. Individuals with borderline personality disorder also tend to engage in uh, what some researchers call dichotomous thinking, and that they tend to think in extremes. A good example of this would be the relationship with their therapist. Uh, on some days, they may see their therapist as being the best therapist in the world, and on other days, when they become angry with their therapist, they can't say enough bad about that person. So dealing with these emotional extremes is one of the challenges in working with someone with borderline personality disorder. They also require a firm, consistent, calm, and uh, honest approach in, in the therapy relationship because they will probably test the therapist in various ways. And the therapist needs to be up for that challenge and to provide the kind of consistency that the client needs in order to have the opportunity to get to a better place. So Marsha Linehan, a well-known psychologist, developed a therapy for borderline personality disorder called dialectical behavior therapy. I have provided you with uh, two videos of Marsha Linehan to take a look at as a part of this module. In one, she talks about one component of her dialectical behavior therapy called mindfulness. And in another, she actually interviews a man uh, who has been abusive towards his wife. It's a fascinating interview. I hope you'll enjoy watching both of these and we'll learn from them. There is a profile of Marsha Linehan in your chapter. And one of the things that's uh, really remarkable to learn about her is that when she was younger, she also struggled with borderline personality disorder and had some pretty uh, scary experiences associated with her disorder, including treatment experiences. So I'll look forward to your comments if you would like to share some of them and your 
uh, discussion board forum about Marsha Linehan's ideas about how to help individuals with borderline personality disorder. The third dramatic disorder is histrionic personality disorder. Individuals with this disorder tend to be rather dramatic. That's what the word histrionic means. They also tend to be rather impressionable. That is sort of naive and suggestible. And uh, to have high needs for approval. Uh, because they tend to be dramatic, they have a way of drawing attention to themselves and can do so in various ways, including in some cases by being somewhat seductive. People with this disorder oftentimes have histories of crash and burn, intense relationships that don't last very long, and uh, that cause them a fair amount of um, heartbreak and would very likely come up and be a part of a therapy relationship with someone with this disorder. They might come in one week saying they, say if it's a female client, saying they met their knight in shining armor and they know they're gonna go off into the sunset, sunset and live happily ever after. And the next week they might come in and, and it's all over. So you can see this sort of intense, short-lived uh, pattern of relationships in their life oftentimes. So you might see somebody with histrionic personality disorder in an outpatient mental health setting. Um, they uh, require also a, a kind of a therapist who can be calm and uh, predictable, stable, can have good boundaries, in the relationship and working with someone with this particular uh, disorder and deal with their emotional extremes in a way that can hopefully help them get to a better place. <clears throat> the last of the uh, dramatic personality disorders is narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, we hear a lot about the term narcissism and modern uh, day society and there is concern among some that we are becoming more narcissistic as a culture but in talking about narcissistic personality disorder what we're really referring to here is individuals who have a great sense of entitlement that they're special they set themselves apart from other people they deserve to be treated differently because they are special and they have extremely high needs for approval and recognition. They have a tendency to uh, distort their accomplishments, that is to exaggerate them, and also are not very inclined to accept personal responsibility for their actions when they do things that are inappropriate or unacceptable where they can cause problems in their lives and in the lives of other people. Uh, some theorists think that underneath all that bravado that you can see in a narcissistic individual is a very fragile self-esteem and uh, a person who lacks capacity to respond to others in an empathic way in fact, some uh, theorists believe that people who become narcissistic may have grown up in families where their parents lack the ability to uh, be empathic with them. All of these ideas about the causes of narcissistic personality disorder are speculative, so we can't put a whole lot of weight on them, but these are just some possibilities that have been suggested. Now, as you can imagine, uh, it, it would be a challenge to work with somebody with narcissistic personality disorder because uh, it's hard for them to be honest with themselves. And um, they are often overly sensitive 
to uh, feedback, which they would probably interpret as criticism. And it would probably be hard for them to allow themselves to be vulnerable in the therapy relationship in ways that optimally can help a person to gain more from that experience. And then finally, we have the anxious personality disorders. The first of these is the avoidant personality disorder. And remember, we were talking earlier about the difference between a schizoid personality disorder and an avoidant personality disorder, and that the schizoid personality disorder really wants to be left alone pretty much, but the avoidant personality disorder, that these individuals want to have connection with other people. They want to develop relationships, but they are afraid to try, so they tend to avoid them. And sometimes, unfortunately, they may experience this self-defeating pattern where uh, their greatest fears are realized because their self-defeating behavior, when they are attempting to relate to other people, may actually push other people away. The person is not trying to do it, but because of their lack of social skills and their anxiety, they may not be able to relate to the other person effectively. And that person may just sort of distance themselves from the individual with avoidant personality disorder because it's not working out. And then that just reinforces further for that individual with a disorder that they're unlovable and nobody wants to have a relationship with them and they're never going to be able to succeed at this. Because they really desire relationship and it is causing uh, distress for them. Individuals with this disorder oftentimes are fairly receptive to therapy. And therapy can be beneficial for them because they can explore their interpersonal fears in the context of a therapy relationship where hopefully they will eventually be able to feel safe. And then they can try out the different skills that they may want to develop and then practice in their daily life in a way that might help them to have more rewarding relationships. A group therapy uh, context can also be very beneficial for these individuals because they get to try out these skills and uh, address their fears about relationships in the context of their relationships in the live here and now with other people in the group. So the next uh, anxious personality disorder is dependent personality disorder. And as you may be aware, people with this disorder, they tend to be overly dependent on other people. They lack confidence in their ability to make their own decisions and work their way uh, through life's challenges uh, with any level of confidence. They tend to latch on to another person and rely uh, excessively on that person to uh, help them to make decisions and figure out how to navigate life. So you can see there's a great uh, sort of sense of um, inferiority, lack of competence, and confidence with somebody with this particular disorder. One of the challenges in therapy with this disorder is that an individuals with dependent personality disorder may try to rely on their therapist too much, that is to depend on them too much, uh, instead of being able to gain the ability and the confidence to make more of their own decisions. So this is something that the therapist hopefully would be able to address in a therapeutic way with someone with uh, this particular disorder, with dependent personality disorder. So the final uh, personality disorder is obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And we might wanna distinguish obsessive compulsive personality disorder from obsessive compulsive disorder. 
What do you suppose the differences might be? Well, if your thinking is that people with obsessive compulsive personality disorder show uh, rigidity and emotional aloofness and uh, inability to adapt to change, a need for a high level of orderliness in their life, you would be right. These are the kind of characteristics that you see in individuals with obsessive compulsive personality disorder. You don't tend to see the pattern of obsessive thinking and compulsive actions so much uh, that are present in obsessive compulsive disorder, which is an anxiety related disorder, if you recall. Sigmund Freud would probably have a lot to say about someone who develops uh, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, and he would probably relate it to his, which stage of psychosexual development? Yes, his anal stage of psychosexual development. Well, that's pretty much it for the personality disorders, and I hope you enjoy uh, seeing Marsha Linehan talk about her treatment and her actual interview with a client. And I'll be talking with you again soon. Goodbye.